If you live here, you live with grief. Some draw their pain closed every night before sleep. Others pour it into these small memorials. And this is just what you see. The true scale of emotional harm is hidden. Hundreds of families, many of them with young children, were in the 24-storey building. For those who've lost everything, a huge community operation to support and care for all who need it. And that need for support and care is rising. Five years on, the trauma in this small corner of London runs deep and the fear is that it could spread. Inside the Almanar Mosque, we meet Rasha. So, Rasha, how are you? On the night of the fire, she was speaking to her sister Rania Ibrahim on the phone, who was stuck in the tower with her two daughters. Rasha decided to start therapy last year. We were invited to film by the councillor and Rasha. Nasara Salabi is a counsellor to many of the Grenfell families. She felt compelled to speak out for the first time because of a recent surge in those seeking help. Like a leapfrog. It's huge, yeah. At the beginning, it was <clears throat> uh, for Almanar, it was like uh, around 10 people a week or less sometimes. ITV News asked the community about the fire's impact on their physical and mental health, both at the time and now. What we found is that little has changed for many people. I haven't slept a single night since that dreadful night. I wake every hour or a couple of hours. Words can't explain how I'm still living after what I've been experiencing in these five years, and I'm still stuck in this position to this day. I feel disconnected from society, anxious flashbacks and still having nightmares. In this community also, the experiences of uh, being a migrant, living in their countries, li uh, f uh, fleeing from war. So this all came up in, in counselling room. They say time heals. I really don't think time heals when you go through what happened that night. So every breath you take is a reminder. A family of survivors. They escaped the tower that night, but are still suffering. The autoimmune disease, did the doctor give a sense of why that suddenly came up? So, um, he didn't know that I was a survivor when I was in the hospital. So we did a MRI scan, CT scan and everything. Everything was fine. But I couldn't explain that, why I couldn't carry my four kilo baby. Just had a baby. And uh, I couldn't even lift my arm up. I couldn't do anything, go up the stairs. And uh, he told me, I know what your problem is. I was like, thank God. Then he asked me, are you stressed or depressed or no? And <laughs> I smiled, I said, like, which one do I tell you? Should I say both? And I said, I'm a survivor. And he sobbed. Manira's son, Hassan, was five when he escaped the tower. He recently requested to go back to counselling. I think about the day uh, when it happened, because I can still remember it. His therapy involves art. Painting and drawing is relaxing. But Hassan's desire to address his feelings is no small task and doesn't come easily to everyone. What would be your message to anybody who's watching this, who really wants to come forward and seek help, but just can't bring themselves to take that step? I would say Almanar Council Service is here whenever you are ready, you feel ready to come. But you are not alone. You don't need to suffer in silence. A respectful quiet surrounds the memorial wall. Indecipherable messages from afar strike deeply on closer inspection. Like this one. I promise to look after your sons and daughters. Ria Chatterjee, ITV News.